Everybody, I want to welcome you all to the Type 88 show. It is your boy Dave Noodles. It's a Wu-Tang Wednesday in Shaolin right now. And we have someone with us. This woman has been blazing her own path for a while now. She's helped so many people in the comedy scene, the art scene, and just life. Um, this is one of the hardest working people I know. She's... um. I remember when I met her, she was doing tons of shows. She's been on an amazing journey, and she's going to be sharing her story with us. So I want to welcome you, uh, Pauline Murphy. Welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Am I able to be here? Um, can, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah. Welcome. All right. Hi, guys. I'm so ha- I didn't even realize it was Wu-Tang Wednesday. See how busy I am in my brain? Like I, you We're supposed to know that. If you're from here, you're supposed to know that. Supposed to know and honor every single thing. <laughs> it's all good. It so, so Method Man would be very ashamed of me right now. And I drank hot chocolate with that man once. Where was this? Uh, on set for Staten Island Summer back in 2014. We were in a movie together. And everybody else was kind of afraid to approach him. And I just was not. <laughs> I was like, this is the mayor. of This is the true borough president of Staten Island. Like, show some respect. Legend. <laughs> Absolute. So... So here we are, you know, you've been on quite a journey, but maybe let's take it back a little bit. (laughs) Yeah, sure, sure. Yes, there's been a lot. A lot has happened. A lot has happened even in the last month. Like every time I see you, it's always like five different sagas have unfolded and then we just meet in the middle again. Like, so we're still doing the same shit, right? (laughs) (laughs) We're still doing what we want to do. So when did you even, so you grew up where? I'm born and raised in Dungan Hills, Staten Island, closest to Old Town. So if you're familiar with like Rab's Bowling Alley, that Burger King right on the corner, uh, PS11, uh, St. Anne's, like that whole area. There's there's churches there. There's it's a very blue collar, complete melting pot mixed area, and I'm very thankful to be able to grow up there. Oh, now the mosque is there. So the biggest mosque on Staten Island is right on my block. So you know, inshallah, like <laughs> it's uh it's good. I love I love where I've grown up. That's amazing. So, so of course now you're pursuing. You know, I, I know you've been in the comedy scene for a decade. For <laughs> take, with, with the, happy even decade with the three years, too. But I fell off the face of the earth. I fell away for three years, but I'm back. I'm back. Came back, but a year or so ago, and then uh, a big tragedy happened in my life and in the comedy scene, which I might get to a little later. That threw me back off and kind of turned me into Olivia Benson. But <laughs> yeah. other than that. There's a lot going on. The comedy industry is uh, is the wild, wild west for anyone that's not aware. There's no HR. There's no cops protecting you. And uh, there's pe- these people think that they're Puff Daddy, but they're not. <laughs> wow. Look what happened to him. <laughs> no, that's real. So I would love to just like hear more of the story. So when you kind of stepped on the scene, you said 10 years ago. Right. I was a 22-year-old in grad school at Hofstra University in Long Island, and I remember it's always been my lifelong dream to be in comedy because I remember being a kid and being a career day and everything, and they were always like, oh, like cop, fireman, astronaut. And when I realized that being an astronaut was very, very difficult to obtain, I was like, all right, I'm just going to be a clown. (laughs) If I can't be in in the stars, then I'm going to be in your face. Like, that's that's it. So, um, yeah, it's but so I was 22 in grad school. And I started out, uh, they have a group, I don't know if they still do, but Hofstra used to have a club that like, any student could participate in called Ha Ha Hofstra. And it was like a comedy troupe or whatever where you'd basically workshop and write things and perform for each other every week and have like a live feedback open mic amongst your peers. And then they put on live shows once a semester. And so like, I, once I got involved in that, I was, it really showed me, I was like, oh, this is a very fun process to get involved in this and there's no pressure it's people hanging out it's it's current events it's it's very cathartic like this is great yeah. so that's what started me up and then after that i just started booking shows because I, I was proactive with it myself i didn't wait for anybody to like graduate me to comedy clubs or like tell me that i was ready to feature or headline like no i just started doing it <laughs> yeah we and the island felt the ripple effect because I, of course, I wasn't always into comedy, but no, but you're you, into you the were community, mixing, though. yeah, you're, yeah. You're, so you're you were mixing the community with the art and the comedy, and it was it was an amazing thing to see. You really connected tons of people, put lots of people on. There were there were just 
so much happening. Well, yeah, we're probably we're probably just talking about the hashtag era, obviously. Like that was 2014, 20, late 2013, early 2014 to about 2016 when I got when I was ousted out of here, forced like whatever, got locked up. But in that that short time was when I got to know you and got close with you and really aligned with what you were doing with Stereotype Co. and basically, you know, active in the community and how we're trying to. Staten Island is no longer the forgotten borough. We basically pulled it up out of the trenches and showed people you can't ignore us. We're on the other, we stare Facts. at the skyline all day, motherfucker. Like, Facts. We're like what are you gonna do? <laughs> we have a boat. You yeah. guys ride our boat for free. But um, but yeah, I just remember it was just it was it wasn't even work for me. It was literally just like I'm gonna be doing this for myself anyway. So if all my fucking former MySpace followers want to jump on my back, like let's do this. Let's show them that Staten Island has all the talent because we do. We don't need anybody. We, 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 there's been times where like I had so much fun just doing an open mic once a week doing a bar show once a week doing a community outreach event with you where you'd have your table set up doing what you do with your product and everything and your message and it's that's it now so it's, it's we had to you know now you guys got to come to us now you know like today's price is not yesterday's price facts <laughs> you you were on, you were just you were just really living it you yeah it was just everywhere I turned you had in a gig you were doing this you were doing that it was different places but yeah hashtag was a central place that i felt a lot happened it was the hub and it also used yeah. to be called uh the money cup, money cup and the cup and the cup full and cup stuff. so there's people there's there's art scene people who are like a generation above us even mm -hmm. or two generations above that were you know local to the area and even people from even like the hippie era whatever like leftover like this was our bohemian kind of spot that everybody, it doesn't matter what your background was, what your race was, what your economic, socio, political, even what your politics are, none of that. All that went out the window is, do you give a shit about your art? Do you give a shit about Staten Island? And do you give a shit about other people? All right, come hang out. Yeah. It was a, it was, it was a, a special moment because uh, I remember, of course, I had no other job at that time and I was just constantly trying to do Bolster events. your and, brand with the stereotype. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was like a, kind of me really going full force with the brand just setting up stuff all the time and i was always at i was always at hashtag bar and then even before as the full cup and the muddy cup we met we met at eve lounge actually and i don't mm. even know if it was called eve lounge back then because that place went through a bunch of transformations down on Arthur kill road yeah first of all that area is cursed as hell just pff, be very <laughs> careful if you get drunk on, on Arthur kill road you could wrap you around the, whatever mm. many car accidents with people on perks stop doing that um, but yeah, I remember please. that's that's where we met. We met at a hip hop event that I got involved with through Rob Barlotta. I don't know if you remember a lot, lot of bars. bars. Yes, a lot of bars. Yeah. He's a real one too. I got to get in touch with him he's, again. He's so great. He's one. I haven't heard one of his freestyles over uh, the Who Shot You beat in a while. <laughs> I need to. It's like that's like a lullaby for me. He's so funny. He's he's Italian, he's, but he's not at the same time. He's special, man. And, um, <laughs> but that was so when you had your that table was the time. Set up yeah, you had the little sign in list, and all I did was want to sign in and be included on the mailing list and then you were mad cool to me and I think you gave me a bronze rose bead bracelet that I forget I don't even remember what oh, word. Had yeah. at the time we had the bracelet I had the bracelet and then that's what started my introduction to your whole movement and then I was like wait a second like this is perfect like this is literally like the merch guide to everything that I'm doing on stage so this mm. is perfect and like whatever like this, this is Staten Island Jesus right here like, <laughs> I'm 33 years old but this is Staten Island Jesus uh, be aware I appreciate that it <laughs> It was it was a real memorable time. I, I know so many people that were part of that time that really put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears into it was crafting also so fun events to and, do it with like our friends. Like, yeah, I, like I like my, my my best friend is Kayla Kazaza. She's a independent artist who's now a mother. Like she's she's a mother. Though. Like she got two kids. So like relax. Shout she out to like, Kayla. Yeah, she's got she's doing a lot right now. But like she, it was just so great to be able to involve like people that I love and bolster their interests and vice versa and it was just a lot of mutual inspiration and basically like when one person's down and there's you know so and so's got a a, a music gig that week yeah. so you can't be depressed because you got to put that on your back and you got to support your, your friends so it was like mm -hmm. because we're all in the trenches if you, here's a secret about staten island everybody's toxic and we're all in the trenches all the time so but you can't you, you have to still go out the house and you still got to support and you still got to spend the last 22 dollars that you got in overdraft you know <laughs> Yeah, no. Nah, so, I even remember if I'm if I'm going back a little bit, that hashtag was about to close, and I I literally remember like 
Oh, like before about, the Monday mic was passed to me? Or, yeah, or, it was just, yeah. I feel like, it was I feel like still. you gave that place hope. They were like, I, oh, well, Pauline got all these people coming, all these things and doing all this. We started rocking let's, on let's Monday nights. Let's put money nights, into this. And yeah. it was like, where Bobby Buns, bless him too. He was fucking awesome. He's listen, He's lost a lot of weight now and he's with his family. He's, he's so talented and so funny. He basically was the person who roped me in and let me inherit the Monday night open mic from mm. the likes of James Girona, rest in peace. He passed away within the last year. We lost him, unfortunately, and he was a creative genius in his own right. And then Jay Miller. If you guys are familiar with Jay Miller, yeah. mid evenings with Jay Miller, and he's a produ- he was was Pretty is work. involved with Impractical Jokers a lot over the years, and now he's in the city running some crazy, awesome Japanese karaoke game show shit. I, don't, I can't keep up with him. He's awesome. But he did the Monday open mic as well. So like I kind of inherited it from them and then immediately started mixing in hip hop and and poetry and bringing more stand up comedy into it because I was a comic. So it was able to just the rappers would come and watch the comics, yeah. the comics would come and vibe to the rappers and then someone would be Daddy Tom. Like we, we, yeah. had, we had characters, like it we was, have a crew. Yeah. No, I saw it and I I literally remember they were like we're going to reinvest into this place. Like you kind of, uh, they, they had tons of hope in that then, place. Yes. And then unfortunately, um, the, a lot men, of stuff the men excluded me from the business table mm. because I was already on my way out for some, a bunch of personal reasons that may or may not get touched upon in this interview. But, um, yeah, after a couple of years of me building the place up, once actual money started to get tossed around, like all of a sudden, like my phone was dry and, uh, I was dealing with some real shit, trying to get a dog back, trying to stay safe and trying to wow. stay sane. And then I was just getting arrested all the time. And like, there's no reason why a master's degree, 25 year, like that anybody that, that thought that I was doing that shit on purpose, like you come on now, like I, people just thought I was a Coke addict, which first of all, no, my brain makes cocaine naturally, like <laughs> relax yourself. Yeah, It yeah. was just a very, very turbulent time, but it was turbulent for a reason. And if you want to know, ask Kayla Kazaza. She knows the truth. Like, yeah, like, come on. No, I, I, you know, cause I didn't see you for a while at, during certain eras of the, the mm-hmm. community. Well, cause vibes. there was always so much going on and then and yeah. you have your own saga of life that so much was going on for you. And mm-hmm. it's like, just because we don't, we're very public people, but just because we don't give you the transcript for everything under the table, like there's always a lot going on. There's always, we're always wearing 10 different hats. So like yeah. p- pay for his hats. <laughs> Buy a stereotype hat if you feel if you feel if you need something new in your life. Or start a new chapter with a new hat. So, you were talking about here you, you are here you are build, building up a place. Yeah. Then yeah. kind of the politics of the industry. I was like the spirit animal of the place. Like, like let's be real. And yeah, then, you were kind of like then, almost like. I was their the, mascot. I was the. You were like the, the Caitlin the Clark of that place. The who? Oh. You'll know the name very soon, but she's basically like the Steph Curry. Oh shit! Of All right, I respect women's that. basketball, like oh, she's wait, four, so wait, her name po- is Clark. Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark. Is she Caitlin with a C or with a K? C. Uh, all right, that means so that Google means so she's it. CC. Okay. That, so the hype is the very hype is crazy. Very real with her. Yo, the, the WNBA is, is, has been making changes, and about like, to be you, you guys are gonna start watching soon. I've seen lit. it actually on TV more in bars now. Like people are actually watching the women's sports. Watch, like, watch right. what happens in the next year. The, I'm the hype. So you, you were the Liberty. What team is she? She didn't get drafted yet. She's oh, gonna so she's get, college. She oh, just she, finished. I, you know she's going to be drafted. I think I have seen her because when I was in the psych ward just now, oh yeah, surprise guys, I'm in the psych ward a lot. Um, I was. They had women's basketball college mm-hmm. on, on the team and she's got a brunette ponytail maybe? Is she? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I have seen this one. Caitlin okay. Clark, shout out to you. I'll be yeah, your yeah. cheerleader. So you were... You, you had the place hype, you had the community hype and then of course the politics come and then... It's that, not even that's the a whole politics. other thing. It's it's ego and e- money. Yeah, it's yeah. so stupid because it, like these people got different politics from each other. I know that they don't get along. And then they just were sitting at the table with money and then shout out to Andy Nadler. I don't know if you remember mm-hmm. him. He yeah. was like he was like the jolly jester grandfather of everybody and that man got fleeced for $300,000 out of the hashtag deal and they took advantage of his want and need for a playground and a a sense of connection and the man tried to hang himself in the fucking hashtag that's how this is sorry for the darkness but like i i I still will look andy nadler if you are out there and if you're alive contact pauline murphy because i give a fuck and you 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 know what i mean you were there for me 
during some dark shit and you were you were just there for everybody you yeah you made your crude jokes and everything but you were always always in good fun and you were giving money to people he was giving rides home to people he was paying for single mothers to, to put their kids in school wow. he yeah he was like a, he was like a philanthropist for the community and they this, a certain group of men took advantage of that and I, wow. I to this day I don't like it. it it's very cursed and they ruined the whole the entire business venture got driven into the gar- garbage yeah after they put in so much money into it they did renovations they even did the sign for if you guys ever went if you guys ever passed hashtag bar which it's now I believe a tattoo place yes so I don't know much about that I'll probably have to get a tattoo from them to like close this chapter of my life but <laughs> but for a long time, there was a sign guy. I think his name was Ryan. I got nothing against him. I don't know enough about him. But this guy, Ryan, did the sign, and it was like it was like a loading screen on the outside of Hashtag Bar, and it was supposed to be like the renovation, mm. like the loading coming soon, and then it just never opened again. Or like it tried, they, whatever it. they tried, they never were able to get it off the floor again because I was fucking exiled. So wow. imagine that. <laughs> I think John John Joseph was involved in it a lot too, and John Joseph is my boy. So John Joseph could give me a little more insight to that probably okay. because they they dicked him around too. He's he's very smart with his business. He knows when to when to get out when 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 things are completely mm. you know mishmash, nothing's getting done. He can he takes himself from the table. So you guys, that's another person. If you ever do any business with John Joseph, just know that though he's he's good. He wants he wants good for the community. He's got a son to feed. Like that's it. He he's a hard working man. Yeah, right. He's always he's giving me. He's another one on the team. Like, he always like, calls me with a bunch of ideas. I'm like, big like, idea. Damn, this guy, this guy me, is. Yeah. On me and fire. him are lofty with the ideas, and then like when it comes down to like needing like workhorses that are like ourselves, mm-hmm. we we only have each other sometimes, and we're like, well, what are we gonna do now? I'll talk to him. Like he'll call me. I'll be like, bro. I'll ask him. I'll say. John, what did you have for breakfast today? Mm-mm. He said, "Bro, I didn't, this man remembers I didn't even eat. Himself. I didn't even eat breakfast, bro. I, yeah, he doesn't I'm even just, remember I'm just feed. so excited about all this stuff. Somebody I give this man these... water, like please, an air. <laughs> He's to like, breathe. I forgot to eat breakfast. I was like, how do you have this much energy? And it's like six o'clock, right? Now. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, he, He's like, bro, but I'm so excited about the community and all this I, stuff. I was just involved with him when we were trying to save the the what this shit over here, the um, Empire Outlets. Mm-hmm. There was, um, I don't know if that's. I don't know if that shit could be saved. With, and he's, he does the mocktails now. I don't. I don't think. The, I don't think that outlets could be saved. No, they, we, be they can't. They can't. It was. It was one store that we were deal, dealing oh, with yeah. mostly, and the mocktail mart was a big thing where he goes around now and tries to actually market, yeah, you know, non-alcoholic alternatives in different places because we grew up in a scene where everybody was drinking and you're making money off of getting drunk and it's just a mm-hmm. it's a toxic cycle or whatever you're losing money and you're losing time and you're losing yeah he's, your, your way about yourself. so it's a it's an alternative to again enjoying your night with yeah no alcohol. you don't have to feel like oh my hands are empty I, you know you don't got to feel like joe jerk off if you don't have a drink in your hand you can have something and if you know as long as you're somebody that can be around other yeah. people drinking alcohol it's he's, actually he's a great moving solution. that stuff yeah, so he's and then yeah, and then my friend Natalia. If you guys know Natalia Hernandez, she's fucking awesome. She's also helped with the mocktails for a while. I don't think she's moved on to something else now in Jersey, but she was. It's just it's I, I support it, and I know yeah. that we tried to get it off the ground here, but the, the the Empire outlets, the people above, the higher ups are just a mess. Yeah, yeah. Now the outlets, they're first of all the Ferris wheel. What the fuck? <laughs> like yeah, that place. You know, um, so much. Over the last week or two, too, it's like the uh, badass boot camp. I, I saw that they got that's booted. That's Lisa. No, no, that's not Lisa. They got that's booted the... out of there. Oh, and, shit. Um, okay. Sorry, ladies. Yeah, yeah. And But to be honest, I I know that wherever they go, they're going to do great. Um, Who, be- badass boot camp? Yeah, yeah. I walked past them a couple of times, and I never actually even got to go inside because something was pull- pulling me away from not going in there. Yeah, um, yeah. Just ambitious they, kid, young yeah. people that um, had a dream and... Basically got cute. bullied nice. out of that spot. You know, I don't know all the details, but just going off, they, Badass you know, they let me know where you go. I'll come pay for a class. Yeah, yeah. Their hearts were definitely affected by it, but I, I know they're they're gonna figure it out. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, I don't yeah, really know all the details, but they're no longer there. You should get real estate in Dungan Hills. You should rent yeah. the space above the Willow or something where the yoga and the aerial shit is. Like combine. Oh with yeah, that, maybe. There's so many spots, so. I, I just think that that's more of a corporate place, and um, it was the contracting was too big, and it wasn't people that were invested in Staten Island because they weren't Staten yeah. Islanders. That's the, really what it comes down to. It was people that didn't give a fuck about this borough, that was, only gave a fuck about the, what's in the bank balance. I was never impressed or 
sold on anything there. I just just even the layout. It was it's too it's too metallic and cold and like kind of they yeah, wanted yeah. you to feel like you're in 2035, but no, we're still staring at the skyline. This feels <laughs> like, what what are you doing? Yeah, I just. I just know that that wasn't the right place for my my friends over there. So yeah, I like know you, they'll figure it out, and I don't know. I don't really know what to say about the outlets. Was, but there was a woman named Courtney Grace, I believe is her name, and she had like the holistic store in there that mm-hmm. I, I bought candles from. I bought crystals from this woman. I bought jewelry from her. Books, okay, everything. And her wherever she is or wherever she, I think she's from Long Island. Yeah. So she might have taken her stuff back out local, but wherever she is, if you're out there, definitely I need to find you and buy your products again because you helped me a lot okay. when, when things were bad. Yeah. And Shout unfortunately, out. she had a storefront there, and it was it was almost like a secret garden. She got booted out it was too. All yes. Yeah. She was in the same mm. place as the mocktail mart. So like that whole, and then there was. Yeah, it's just a frame of mind when you're an artist, and uh, I don't think that place really embraces that. No, it definitely did not. They, um, all the art people were like, it, it was I in just, that same store. They want more of a corporate, from what I see, they want like a Nike, or they want like a Burger King or well, something. guess what? Nike you know? brand, you got to get familiar with stereotype. <laughs> that stereo is going to replace the check mark one day if you guys don't watch your mouth. Yeah, so, <laughs> but I, so no, but anyway... Just seeing the artist community just thrive and just, I know so many amazing people out here doing great things. And so, of course, we didn't see you for a while, right? Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot, a lot, like a lot happened. Yeah. Maybe you could, um, what, what can you talk about or what, about, well, like, what, what did you kind of learn from or? this journey? Cause I, cause for, it felt like I didn't okay. see you for a few years. Yeah. A lot so, happened. Like obviously the pandemic happened to the rest of the world, but for mm-hmm. myself, Back in 2019, I was 28 years old. And for those of you that, that don't know me personally, I saw, suffer from <laughs> whatever. I have bipolar one disorder, aka manic depression. The, but I have like the Kanye West version. So it's not just like, you know, oh, like Demi Lovato, like she's sad sometimes. And then she's, no, it's it's worse than that. It's like I'm going to Vegas for six months or like I'm becoming Assassin's Creed. Like it's one or the other. So. I anticipated that a, a big sad, so to speak, was on its way, and I started protecting people from my own darkness, and basically just pulled away from the scene and pulled away into myself for about three years. I, I, I wasn't working a lot. I, um, I had to stay with family. I had to stay with my parents, like, you know, on some humble shit. I was back home all the time, and... Yeah, that lasted. It was almost like a curse. That shit lasted for three years, and it didn't break until somebody very close to me passed away. And as soon as that person passed away, it was like a button got clicked, and the energy that can't be uh, created or destroyed came back to me, and I inherited, like, non-depression again. Like, I was able to see colors again. Music sounded better. Food tasted. I was had the will the wherewithal to start contacting my old friends like like I've mentioned my best friend Kayla Kazaza a couple of times but she yeah it brought me back to her and she was already in the midst of getting close to her now husband and she's got two kids so it's okay. like life was winding us around and yeah. finally wound me back so wow and then ever since I got close to her again everything else trickled down from there and I went back into comedy and some music here and there and modeling like everything kind of came back Politics, even though guys be prepared for when I run for something. Haha, <laughs> fuck you. Just kidding. I can't curse. Um, I have to learn how to not curse if I'm going to do politics. That's oh, it's annoying. <laughs> it's very annoying. That's what, the first thing I do when I'm a politician is I'm going to be like, guess what? The F word is not a bad word anymore. The bad word is going to be taxes. <laughs> the T word. You shouldn't say it out loud. We're not paying. If you live in Staten Island, I don't know why you pay taxes. It's just we should be more libertarian. That's another story. I just, the, the roads. I, that's the only reason why I would move to Jersey. Just the roads. It's just just because, but then you have drug but handles I, in Jersey. You yeah, deal yeah. With their left turn. But that's the only real reason I would move there. Um, so what a journey for you. So you said three years go by. So much yeah. happened. Yep. You reconnect with old friends. Mm-hmm. You get back. Now you're back on the scene. Yeah, because reconnecting with the with the old friends, like people that are so much a part of you, can help mirror back mm-hmm. who you're supposed to be. Yeah, in my opinion. So it's like once I like I, said, I get one conversation with with my friend Kayla, and I just remember like, oh shit, like that's right. I don't have kids yet. Why am I not like taking over some corporate shit or doing something useful with yeah, my time? Because yeah. she wishes she had time. Like she's got to deal with princess time and you know a baby and and tummy time, bellies and changing diapers. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah. No, you really. <laughs> I think that's 
the amazing part about life. You you talk to other people going through stuff, and it just it makes you think about wow, they're going through something of their own. They're they're working through this. On they're figuring it out. And even though you may be going to through different things, I think just by talking to friends and just hearing their story, it just helps. Yeah. That's why the, that's why we I've been doing the show so long cause because it's so interesting. Hearing it's your like, story, it's like oh wow, she got through this. Mm-hmm. Oh, this thing that I'm working through, I could work. I could. Yeah, and I now could you're like, okay, that. wait a second. Like, yeah. I, I mean, even for myself, I've been through a lot of bad things, a lot of dark things. Did you did you isolate yourself during yes. those years? Okay, yes. because you were like, I haven't talked to my best friend. Yeah, in a I, long I, time. she could tell you. She, it was yeah. it was as if I died. I died. You made to that myself. choice. You're I, like, I'm I, not. I'm not talking I made that choice, but the, the illness was also making it for me. So Got it was it. like I predicted yeah. how bad and how how low I was gonna get. And there's, I, unfortunately, I, and a lot of us. A lot of you guys out there suffer from depression and some of you might suffer from like the severe kind that I have and not even really acknowledge it at this point. But it's when something pulls you into the gray and keeps you stuck there, that's when you got to it sucks because you don't even ha- you don't even have the, the mentality to try to drag yourself out. And because I had friends like she tried, you know, it's like they were mm-hmm. throwing me life, life, uh, whatever you call it, like life preservers, bringing me Easter baskets of, of kindness I have two beautiful parents who are still alive and who still are willing to support me. So, like, I had all the blessings around me, and I was still unable to to feel them, yeah. which is wow. the, which is the disease that that's depression. That's like ad- anhedonia, actually, when you lose the ability to feel pleasure that's from something. anything. So, if you guys aren't familiar with the Greek word anhedonia, it's it's a version of supre- depression that's so severe that you lose the ability to say like whatever your favorite food is, whatever your favorite music is. Like, I knew that I was in trouble, and we're on a radio show, so this is appropriate when music sounded bad to me like i wasn't able to get lost in any sound or audio or anything and music has always been my iv like my lifeblood I, but i could listen to music 24 7 and be doing wow. the rest of my life it's just how it is but when when music started making me angry and cry all the time because it didn't it sounded like shit it was the weirdest thing there's something wrong with your brain there's something mm. toxic and traumatic that happened to your brain neurologically that is keeping you from from life and, for, and also spiritual stuff too like I was you know I was not in I'm, I'm not I'm not gonna get specific with religions and everything because I, I believe a little bit of everything I, even yeah. though I'm born I'm Irish Roman Catholic but I like to leave my horizon open to everybody's okay. everybody's beliefs but if you, like if you're not even looking into your own higher power or what higher power might be like you're you're stuck you're sinking and you gotta be careful that's tough That that's super tough so you're in this dark place like quicksand. Well, yes. So what was, what, how did you even kind of take started pulling steps? Because when I, you when you're in quicksand, sometimes you're walking yeah, or moving, so and it, and walking. you go lower. Yeah. Or, or like you move a little bit, and now you're further. So yeah. how did you make progress to I, get out of? I took it even this? lower to where like I got to a point where I was suicidal. I was actively for a long time planning and plotting how I was going to kill myself. Wow. Um, where I bought, and this, this goes back to, like, I've had this disease, whatever, this condition, whatever you want to call it, diagnosed uh, in 2011 when I was 20 years old, um, and I've had it ever since. And back in 2013 when I was in an episode that was like the 2019 one, just very, very bleak quicksand, I was hyper fixated on ordering poison from the dark web. I posed as a Chinese business and was able to get something shipped to me from the dark web, sodium nitrite, I think it's called. And it's actually a substance that's used for some chemical shit, industrial, I don't really know. But you could use only a tiny bit of it, a little tiny pinch of salt, and you could put it on a burger and you'd kill yourself within six hours. Wow. So they're like, this is the, why do I know this? Because I was stuck on these message boards, Reddit. There's Reddit message boards for all this, by the way. Be careful with Reddit. Like In the internet, you can find anything you want to find out, and you can find anything you want to find out. Wow. So you got to be very careful with the internet. You can get caught... And you can get stuck in your screen, but you can also get stuck in your screen time where now you're not connecting with mm. the actual world immediately around you and you're just stuck into whatever your internet life is. Like, don't do that unless you're doing something productive, like like, like stereotype. <laughs> like, be careful with the internet. So you got to a point, it was just the lowest of low. Yeah, it was when- where I'd already made peace. I could, like, logic was out the window because I had already set in my head, like, obviously I'm going to kill myself. It's just a matter of how and when. Like, do I have the wherewithal? Do I want to delay somebody's train today? 
or am I going to jump off the ferry? Like it was, it was just like me thinking like, what's the way I can kill myself that won't con- inconvenience the rest of Staten Island? Like that's just how Staten Island I am wow. with my thoughts. Like I just had to think like, could and getting a gun is is easier than it should be on Staten Island. Wow. Um, Were you thinking about what anyone else would feel? Because sometimes it's like, yes. damn, because this person relies on me for this. I work here. This person's here. This is my best friend. This is my partner. Like The only reason I didn't do it is absolutely because of my parents being alive and well, and I'm their only child. So imagine how tragic their life story would become if like at 30 something, like after all the degrees and all the accolades and the Miss Hibernia pageant and the ancient order of Hibernians, like if it came to that yeah, and after to, surviving domestic violence with see, the name of a person that won't mention like blah, blah, blah. I would, so, ne- I would never wish that on anybody for, yeah. to see their own, someone to see their child. And also it's like one of the die. things that was keeping me depressed was being a single childless woman myself, because as you get close, uh, it's not, it doesn't happen to everybody but hormonally as you get to your late 20s early 30s your body is like craving pregnancy it's just a natural thing it happens to like i said not everybody like some people yeah, are very yeah. happy and childless but like i'm somebody that wants to go either way yeah yeah so my body and my mind was just clear and i knew that since i was in that deep of a depression i wasn't a suitable partner wife mother or any of that and there was nothing i could do about it at the time so my body wanted a baby and my mind knew that I wasn't capable of motherhood. So it was just like, all right, well, might as well kill myself. Like, I'm not going to serve my purpose, so to speak. Like, it was just, this is just how I had thought at the time. So, wow. And, and then to be somebody that would be, that wanted a child and was so depressed about not having that, how, how dare I take a child from my parents? That's the thing that kept me in balance. Wow. At the time. Yeah, so it was, so that's uh, if my parents listen to this, they're gonna be like, God damn it, like, like bitch, why are you saying what? Don't tell everybody. But anyway, um, yeah, no, you think about who, the people in your life. It's like, damn, you know, I, I freaking the life, whole rest life of my sucks right now. It out. I don't even, I don't want to deal with any of this. All I want to shut off, but yeah. but wait a minute, this all is gonna hurt. Figured it out. This like, is gonna destroy these people that. Are yeah. living with me, or, or and the people that gave me life. Yeah, I mean, it was really, it really just came down to just my parents for the most part, as far as family yeah. goes. Because I'm, I'm on good terms with all my family. Yeah. I'm close enough with my family, but they have their own universes. Like, of course. Like I got yeah. my my Norris Everyone cousins; has... they're all firemen, and they got their own kids going of on. My Murphy cousins are all successful in their own right, and they yeah. got kids and stuff. So it's just every. It seemed like everybody else was doing the nuclear family picket fence thing, and then here I am doing Monday night hashtag and then after that gets built up for two years then i'm in jail like it was just it was just so weird to be like at the ages that everyone else was getting promoted and like bolstering into these new roles of motherhood and 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 being a wife and being a business partner and everything and i had none of these i had none of these labels for all the hats i threw on over the years and all the fucking footsteps i took i'm still nobody's nothing and it was a very weird experience to to deal with and when every day you see people and this anybody can relate to this on social media every day you see people getting engaged you see people getting promoted you see people have the babies now we all know it's just the highlight reel of course yeah but it's still but of course there are highlights though yes exactly it's like wow this person is doing some cool stuff oh i kind of want to do this stuff too but things aren't making sense right now for me my life path is not path it it does hit a little different it definitely you have to almost practice not feeling bad. Oh, 100%. Even though deep down you're like, well, I want to feel good. But you'd be like, well, I, I still kind of feel really bad. Because, because I'm, we're, we're toxic Staten Islanders. You'll yeah, see yeah. people that you might have been involved with at one point, like moving on with their lives yeah, completely yeah. as they should. Yeah. As they should. And we wish them the best. We wish them benevolence yeah, and, yeah. and prosperity and all that. But it's still hard to see like the life path that you didn't take. And if yeah, you had yeah. taken one different right turn, maybe that would be like, it's yeah. just it, the, the what ifs could kill you. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think of stuff, too. I, like, like, not that I'm in regret, but I'm like, if I made one other, if I made this turn here, right, everything could be so different. Bro, if I didn't get one fucking pulled over by one cop in 2016, I'd still have my Mustang. Like, I had a beautiful yeah, baby blue yeah. convertible Mustang that everyone knew was like my chariot. And then this fucking cop, whatever, I, I take responsibility too, but like this, this nasty cop who was hitting on me. Yeah, yeah, the t- like just whoa, turned it into a anyway. The turns we make in life, right? It would, yes, the, yeah. The, the roads that we take, and then you you, you make a two seventy, like it's not even a one eighty. You go whoop, back to some of the things that you remember, but not everything. And there's some things that you can never go past again. Yeah, and that's yeah. what really hurts. The things that you have to just only you can only reflect on certain things. Now yeah, you can't. 
you can't uh you know, you can't contact that person. You can't. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, if that if someone you know is now, a, like I said, a wife, husband, or mother, father, it's just so, like that's not your place anymore. Yeah, yeah. And you have to know your. You got to know your stay in your lane. You got to know your place. Facts. Yeah, I've seen. So we talked about making the turn, but then, what I've seen in life too, it's I make the turn, but my day and my month and my year doesn't end there. There's tr- there's a turn almost on every hour of the day of what I could choose. Oh so, yeah, we're, we're doing tumble salts. Sometimes yeah, yeah. Because so we, because we're involved with a lot of there's me so and many you, choices to me make and you in particular, all the time. We're, we're involved with a lot of people that aren't like our family per se, like blood, like not your household. You're dealing with people on a professional level, a friend level, a, a somewhat professional level, a wannabe professional level. Like there's just yeah, yeah. so many genres of people that we deal with every day because we're people, 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 persons, whatever the hell. And then those people's energy and their bad decisions or unfinished decisions come in and infect your life. I said infect. I meant to say affect, but both totally. words, both words it could, apply. It could, yeah. <laughs> could definitely. So I totally hear that. So, of course, you know, you're seeing life. Things are hitting you hard. You're like, wow, I'm, all right, I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to move forward with. This Kim. is actually perfectly appropriate. For anyone that could see, I accidentally just pulled out like a ripped dollar bill out of my back pocket. <laughs> and this represents all the fucking money on the table that me and Dave Noodles have not been able to collect because we've been involved in so many projects that didn't see fruition. Mm. And we're supposed to go FY, like, we're just supposed to go to the moon and then things mm. go into a crater instead. And listen, it's nobody's fault. It's no bad blood. I have no oh, malice no. when I say it, but there's just been a lot of different tables that we've sat at and then what's happening? <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, so, But I think it goes back to the, the multiple decisions, right? I, we, I made the decision. We did, but it it's interesting because when you're there, you want to be a person of service. Yes, oh, the, and the you want to help. Of course, yes. You you're in this mode like me for the longest, from literally my twenties to my even current. Whenever I sit with anyone, I want to see them flourish, mm-hmm. and I want nothing s- but good intentions. I want to help. But, nothing but prosperity. We don't. That's all we want. Potential into prosperity. Yeah, but then you start. But then as you get you get older, and you're like, wow, I'm working all day. I got to go see my family. Got to do this. You got to kind of make these choices of how much time you put into certain things, and yeah, it's like that's a mistake I've definitely much, made over the years. How much pie, or pizza pie, are you gonna have? You're gonna mm-hmm. have a quarter of a slice. You're gonna have four slices, but you only really have. Remember to eat, John Joseph. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You only have X amount of time to, per per the day, and then you see, okay, wait, all right, I'm spending a lot of time here. I mean that uh, that happens with me in the comedy a things lot. Things are good. It's a lot of like as I got older, it was like. Oh snap! I gotta kind of put a little less time here. Yeah, you gotta. Or I to hit a wall and I'm like, on. "Damn, I'm mad. I I can't put any more time here now." Like sometimes I I had to hit the wall so hard that it was so, like, "Yeah, that you that you rebound." All right, back. well, screw this. I'm not doing this. I, it sucks that it had to get to that, but I think life too is sometimes if we can catch it before, but sometimes you have to hit that wall. No, there's there's some of those tables that you sit at for a while and you really you really think it's going to become something and then you after a while you realize it's toxic or it's weighing you down or yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's bleeding your resources that you could be putting into something else because we've already got 12 other projects that we're thinking about. So then I got to flip the table now and you walk got, away from it. Yeah, yeah. That so I love how you said that walk away from it. So you walked away from you know this of course not the feeling completely because you said you were going through so much you, you you made this choice but you also made the choice to not kill yourself yeah so i'm still w- making that choice no, no, yeah yeah so I, I do i do feel better like i said yeah yeah has got two babies i gotta see how big they get yeah yeah of course you know as we talked about like you make a choice but then like choices just keep coming up and then you kind of have to yeah. make them often it's like enough. it's like a game it's like when we're always yeah. like if you if you like playing board games as a kid the, the the life choices I mean the life path that someone like myself or Dave has taken it's like a board game every single day or like that whole alternate what do they call it like another universe is like a game that people used to play where they made like a sim that does all these different things like yeah, there's yeah. different we get fucking pl- choices put in our face every single day and it's like you gotta choose bing 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 what am I decorating what kind of honeycomb of am I producing right now because it's a new every season is a new honeycomb. Of like, what, mm-hmm. where, the, where am I? Where am I turning my 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 snapback? Is it going this way or is it going backwards? Am I Ash Ketchum today? Yeah. <laughs> no, you only have so much room on your plate, right? You, you and you yeah. can't have Thanksgiving in eight houses, yeah, right? Yeah, oh, no, Most oh, of us maybe one, 
totally one, maybe two. And I'm not saying to not do fun stuff, do lots of, enjoy your life. But I'm saying when you're choosing your path, like really the grind, the hustle, like Shaquille Shaquille O'Neal wasn't doing commentary when he was doing basketball. And yet he's so good at it. Like he's like, well, he's yeah, because yeah. he did the basketball. But, like but he think lived about the like like the but when he was doing basketball, he was doing basketball. <laughs> was there was Shaq. no like, oh well, he's over Shaq. here kind of, and he's over there kind of, and kind of here, Mm-mm. and doing a little bit of this. He has no, a size was, thirty-two or a size twenty-three foot. I forget with which size it is. It's something <laughs> ridiculous. My father knows this. Say, yeah, yeah. Or he has to have the custom shoes made because this motherfucker is Shaq. Like but, you, you need to you need to cater to him. But I think we could learn from. So, like, there's a word that's been going in my head a lot lately. It's professional, right? Like, if you want to be a professional, what's it take to do that, right? And I mm-hmm. think seeing Shaquille is a perfect example. He just put his head down. And now he's doing side quests. And just I did love it. these celebrities yeah, yeah. that are just doing side quests. Now he just him, has unlimited Snoop money. Dog, he's Ryan like a Reynolds. child like people that as an just, adu- yeah, a smart just, adult now. Just doing whatever they want. Even Madonna, too. Madonna's out there doing side quests. Like I think that's what your adulthood weekend. could be for a lot of us. Oh, hell yeah. It's, if it has we, to be at this point. If we grind like Shaq during, <laughs> during our during our young younger generation, like when we hit our 50s, 60s, we could kind of be kids like playing around as adults, like Absolutely. going to parks, taking people out, buying people uh, yeah, dinner, going if I, especially if to, going if to the events. Especially if I don't got actual biological kids, bitch, I'm taking all your kids to Disney World. Like, let's yeah, go. yeah, that's how I see it. So mm-hmm. I'm like, yo, I'm going to, I just got my head down. That's that. And I think that's so important. Putting your head down, just really working hard. There's yeah, no um, substitute for hard work. And uh, there's sh- one shout out I want to give to yeah. uh, the well, one thing that's thrown me off my professional career and actually made me focus more on uh, sex trafficking. Oh God, we're getting that dark. No, it's uh, my girl Jax Delasso. She was another comic, female comic, who started in New York City and was in the game for about ten years, just like me. And she was the Matt Damon to my Ben Affleck. Like we wrote shows together. We had oh, movie wow. scripts together. She won shout the show. Shout out to her. She won the show Chopped. She was on Wild and Out. She was, you know, performed at all the different clubs in the city, minus the cellar. They were, like, holding out on her for the cellar. And she, unfortunately, fell victim to a lot of dark shit about a year ago, and then she passed away. Oh, man. And now the, the narrative says she killed herself. But uh, I, I, know, I know differently. And wow. I know that even if she did something by her own hand, someone backed her into that corner and made her that hopeless, and I'm going to find out who. Wow. So I've been, I said, I've been like Olivia Benson, John Wick, for the last year because people are insane and really think that they're going to just blame it on mental illness. Like, no, no, no. I've been in that dark trenches for three years when I could have killed myself, and then it doesn't just happen like that. Like, it does, someone, wow. someone like her that's been through so much and overcame so much shit... She's not just gonna give up. If anything, she's gonna be spiteful and stick around. So, uh, like, so, so I need to know who who got her that dark, and that's the, that's another story. That's when I get to L.A. So shout we'll, out, to, shout out to her. Rest in yes, peace. Uh, we, justice we, for Jax. You can do hashtag Justice for Jax because her story is not J-A-X? over. J-A-X? J-A-X. Her name was Jax Delasso. D-E-L-L apostrophe capital O-S-S-O, and her mm. real name is Jacqueline Bobian. Um, but I'll, I'll, if anybody talks to me, like you'll, you'll, you'll get the information or whatever. Yeah. But, and I'll, I post a lot of her stuff and she, she even made music too. So I'm going to be taking her music that she, you know, her unofficial stuff and be like actually producing it and remixing it into other things. Cause her art is going to live on through me now. Cause we had plans and shit. So it just sucks because like I said, she's the Matt Damon to my Ben Affleck. So now my going to LA and everything is now tainted by this because it was supposed to be going to meetings and auditions. And now it's like, where am I going? Yeah, you know? yeah. That's very dark. So, as unfortunately, that happened. And then if you guys are keep keeping up with the news, like P. Diddy just fell. We oh, saw that. We know that that's complex. But there's also, it crosses over worse into the comedy industry. And these motherfuckers are not P. Diddy. They think they are. And they don't got money like that. And they're just forcing my friend to do OnlyFans and to do, oof. So, like I said, so if you follow me, Whiskey Burrito, on social media, you'll you'll see me. Like I like yeah, to keep yeah. Dave's stuff positive because he's got to deal with like twelve other communities, like sub shit. So, like, come to me for that. Like, don't. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's all good. I I love you know just hearing people's story. I know that no one's story is is pretty. No. Completely, <laughs> but it's all Even it's all so it's always beautiful. There you right, go. like you, you know, no one's been through just the prettiest life 
But like, I'm they, talking people got paid life. off and shit. Like, I, ooh, ooh, ooh. Like, I yeah. lost friends. I've lost peers. I've lost a lot in wow. comedy because it's split up into two camps where people just assume that she killed herself or people are, know that there's a lot that went into it. And the I know people that. that are, the people that are with me are the people that know that a lot goes into these kind of things. That people, she, come on now. She, had, she spent Thanksgiving with all of us every year. She was a professional chef. She just won her dream job on Chopped. She just won the episode of Chopped and then boom. Her ex boyfriend's a chef too, so let me talk. Never mind. Yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll move on. No, it's a no. It's you know, it, it really. My heart goes out to anyone that's lost someone because. You also, know, as if like I don't talk to her ghost. Like you guys know how weird I am. You guys, you guys know I have an ex boyfriend that's like my guardian angel that's dead. I got like I got mad dead people that talk to me. So, good luck. I believe in angels. No, that's. I appreciate everything you're sharing with us and I'm happy that you're here to tell this story because I'm thrilled to be here. This is actually this is so much fun and I just I have so much like love and respect for you that anytime you contact me for a project, like I know that's something I gotta co sign and slap my name on because this mm. is like I said, there's like maybe up to five to ten people that carry this island on their back, like spiritually and mentally, because we're just so proud of it. Like we never got, we never signed up for the whole like, oh, Staten Island sucks. Like go home. <laughs> like it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I always wanted to just be what I needed, right? There you that go. that's that was be who always you needed when you were younger. Yeah, yeah, and I'm I'm so grateful. I had two amazing parents, but when I was a kid, Same, so I didn't know I needed parents. I, I didn't want anyone. But, yeah, but a thought. cool kind of person that would talk to me, but also keep it real with me, not just say, oh, well, you're the best or you're the, you're great. And my parents didn't do that. But that that's, I think, who I became. Is It was like, I you're never like I the, never had a big brother, so I try to be like that, but also say, just like a brother. You're like the Boy Scout to, Girls and Boys Club, like big brother <laughs> mentor for like whoever, like anybody like in the hood, like anybody in, in, the, in the north, especially uh, like the north shore of Staten Island community, like this half. The great kills and forward half. The South Shore is their own thing. I love. I just love being there for people. I'm grateful I get to do it often, and um, I, I'm grateful that I've got to see your journey. You've been on Oof. an amazing journey. I can't even imagine. Mario Kart. <laughs> I can't even imagine where you're gonna go next. I don't so know. you know, we always we're always talking about goals. We're always talking about dreams, but like that that stuff is fun but there's so much work in between you have you have the idea you you want to make this thing you happen you got to live it every single day even when you don't want to wake up and even when you wake up late you're just like oh all right time to clock into whatever i'm already doing like yeah yeah <laughs> and you're an amazing example of the work on the ground but also inside you know dealing with dealing with demons dealing with trauma no, dealing with trauma real people look at how many people drop dead off of addiction yeah. and stuff like that if you don't think that's demons like i don't know what you think that is if you think yeah. it's just pharmaceuticals doing it or if you think it's just people just can't help but take these pills like no bitch like we are there's tortured souls on this island and this yeah. island has been cursed for a while i don't know if it's after 9 11 or what really made it turn because it didn't feel this way when i was a kid and i know blah 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 you were a kid i don't know things got have gotten dark since like 2008 2009 when there was the housing collapse and the economy was shit while we were in college or graduating into nothing. We graduated into like being broke mm -hmm. and everybody's degree didn't mean anything. And then everybody's just pissed off and everybody's getting fucked up on, you know, drinking, doing drugs. And then as we get older, your body starts to age. You start needing mm -hmm. these pills for certain conditions. And now you're an addict. It's just there's so many factors, so, yeah. so many factors and so many people get stuck. And I, I, almost everybody I know. Is doing all right, but they're, they're not thriving in one area, like, really badly. Like, maybe they want to buy a house for years mm -hmm. and they just can't do it. Or maybe they just want to have a happy relationship and they just can't do it. Or maybe they just want to hold down a job and they just can't do it. So, like, everybody seems to have, like, a monkey on their back, like a burden that they're not talking about. And it's an unspoken thing. Like, I got one friend who I'm not, I'm not even going to say her name, but she's been, like, houseless for a year on some crazy shit like wow. where she's completely capable she used to make like $135,000 a year but because she shared a social media post on my behalf and the shit went viral and she started getting death threats so she had to move she had to literally move wow. out of her house and yeah so that's craziness to me and what else? she's like a nomad now she's just thank god she's like magical and she's got friends and she's a beautiful soul so she's gonna be fine yeah but yeah. it's like she's gonna have her own place very soon but okay it, just, it shouldn't have taken this long wow but you know what if, if, if you're like you never know what it's like 
to to be houseless or be homeless unless you don't have a bed and a shower that you can just go to. Once you take those two things for granted, like I'm not talking about, oh, where's my next meal coming from? There's food everywhere. Like if yeah, you look yeah. for it, if you go to your community pantries, if you go, like you can always get fed. But like, where can you shower though? Like, no, it's it's so important to just have peaceful places to do health health related things just take care of yourself go or just like lay your head yeah. at night like we all need we're all we all so these, important we all got to drain our head because we all we all think too much and we're all a lot of us are very dark and deep mm-hmm. whether or not they let on to it and if you don't have a place to lay your head at night that's yours alone and you get to wake up with the free mentality of like you don't owe nobody nothing you don't got to run away to anywhere you don't got to hide mm-hmm. like that's major no it's true it's true like I was briefly homeless for a while when I was running away from a domestic violence situation in 2016 after the whole hashtag thing fell through. I had no choice but to leave because I kept getting arrested if I was here. So wow. I, I fled to Las Vegas for a few months. Wow. Not even a few months. It was like it was like a two months or whatever. But I was there as a fugitive and I was homeless. But wow. because I'm me and I was in the 25-year-old female body with clothes and I was showered and everything. I was able to get little jobs everywhere. Like I was able to work at any casino. I was able to promote for any show. I just, I basically walked around like the little mayor. I didn't do anything. Like it, Vegas was very easy to me, but it was only because I was a 25 year old white woman that was built the way that I'm built. Like it was, if it was, if I had been a black man or if I had been an older Hispanic person, you know, there's just, if I had been somebody else, it wouldn't you, have been that. Yeah, like you I would have to go somewhere that. else. That's not a solution. Don't, run away to Vegas if you got problems a lot of you would become worse like <laughs> yeah yeah no but the thing about you you're a go-getter you know and um I've always seen it you always worked really hard and you also I like John y- Cena's um mantra hustle loyalty respect yep, yep once I saw that I was like oh shit okay I can see him yeah <laughs> no you're a go-getter you worked hard you, you showed it him. you showed it in school you got a, a master degree that that is not oh, yeah, easy I've never failed a test before I've never once you've organized before. plenty of things bringing people together that that stuff's not easy and um that's why like yo Nicole Malley attack is hire me like <laughs> like we need to do something with I need to someone needs to put me in a position where I actually have like on the books power because shit is annoying at this point. Like, I, like, I'm being suppressed as if I'm unemployable. Why? Because I say do-to-do on social media. Like, d- I'll delete my Facebook tomorrow. Somebody put me in a corporate office or in Eric Adams. I used to be a staff analyst for the Department of Information Technology and Telecommunications. Do it, which is the fucking citywide agency that controls all the technology. And we were the ones that gave you free Wi-Fi in the city. That was me. That was my company or whatever. And, like, I was ousted from that job because of my domestic violence situation so i didn't yeah. pass the prohibition period you're supposed to be good for 18 months i was showing up late because i'm pissed off because i'm in the hospital i showed up late it's just bad luck yeah that's yeah, just bad was, timing bad. timing it is mm-hmm. but you know what that's still on my resume i still worked as a staff analyst like that's an, yeah i was supposed to be making one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year and what look what happened so it's like once again yo mayor adams this place is turning into Gotham. Hire some white bitch. Come on, put me in, coach. Like I, I'm so serious. He goes up partying with like whoever, and he takes pictures with Jay Z. Like, all right, I'm in the Illuminati too. Like, call me. I got my. They took my ring in the hospital. I got my fucking one-eyed ring. They took it from me. I'm the intern. I've been the intern for a while. I I, I feel like I feel like just in this world, there's you got to kind of find this happy medium, right? Like you feel the type of way, but it's like. Certain, certain people don't want to hear it and I'm not ever no, telling anyone course. I'm not telling anyone to like they unsubscribe limit, before you even get your sentence limit your but but like in comedy when you're in a room you read it right you see oh, yeah. you see what the guy's wearing you see he has a mustache you see the guy's like 75 with a 22 year old right Ooh, you're reading the room so we gotta kinda do that in in real world too unfortunately you don't know who everyone is but you, you don't know, know you're, you're posting someone, stuff. Be, it some just people be don't safe. show their hand. They keep their hand yeah. behind their back. And they, and then there's other people. The worst kind of person is the person that, what, that throws rocks and then hides their hand. Unfortunately, when you deal with people professionally, professionally, there's a lot of hand hiders and there's a lot oh, of people yeah. throwing rocks and there's a lot of people that think they're clever. They're not. Yeah. No, of course. You know, I, I just say, you know, keep working on yourself. I'm not just saying you, but 
Mm-hmm. You got whatever that thing keep is. Working. Keep, keep working. Keep working. We, working you know, really. We know that we got a lot of places. Become to go. an absolute like, monster. What happens to that boat that Pete Davidson and Colin Jost bought? Like, come on, that was supposed to become like some sick nightclub, and they, they, they probably like, as if they time. don't have the money to do that. Like, what contract? I want to know who's holding up litigation or <laughs> blah 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 contracts. Give me that boat. All right, I'm born and raised in Staten Island, and I'm not a princess like Pete Davidson and, and Colin Jost. I'm not married to Scarlett Johansson. Okay, like they're yeah, distracted. Yeah. They have people that they're. Do- I'm not doing anything. Give me the boat. All right, I yeah, will t- yeah. I'm going to kidnap Shane Gillis. If you guys know <laughs> Shane Gillis, he's a Philly comic, but in my mind, I think he should be the king of Staten Island instead of Pete Davidson. So I'm going to kidnap Shane Gillis and take him to the boat, and then that's going to be our boat. So we have the ferry. So, guys, just be prepared. <laughs> Philadelphia is taking over Staten Island. We're, we're seceding from New York City without because the taxes, whatever. I, well, I think that's probably why they bought the boat. You just said it, taxes. Um, uh, but anyway. See, is the taxes when you, is just such a word. No, but when you got money like them, like when you're pulling in tens of thousands a week, I'm not counting their money, but that's probably what they're making. Whatever it is. But they both do out, well, their right? Projects. He just they're worked both, with Joe Pesci. They're both, uh, mil- they're they're both millionaires. Worked. He got Joe Pesci out of retirement. So, yeah. like, Pete Davidson is untouchable. Leave him alone. When you're, when you're a millionaire, you have to... When you're getting taxed, probably half of what you're... Just say you get... That's so two million. That's no, so but then you. Like, then just give me one million dollars. No, but Don't then, give me two and then so take it back. I think we. So the the cool part about all this, so a lot of people complain about all oh, the rich, rich people, rich people, and you know I'm, I, everyone has opinions. My my goal is why don't you learn from them, right? Like why don't we just but learn their what, secrets? Yeah, like, yeah. I, I, so I, I, I never pay taxes. I get sh- money back. They're showing year. they're showing their cards publicly. A lot of them. But a lot of people are hating, like, oh, we'll screw them or whatever. And so, everyone so has an people, opinion for whatever, right? But like no, Pete Davidson uh, and the, the homie. He's great. I'm, I, I, I have, no, they I have that. no patience for Pete Davidson slander because he went to St. Joseph by the Sea. He was a freshman when I was a senior. And I remember seeing his little yeah. fucking stupid skinny ass walking he's around. He's a hard worker. Like as if he's my little brother. So if you want to talk guy. bad about Pete Davidson, like I'm, I'm coming to your house with a gun because it's very annoying. He landed Ariana Grande. Like, can we please show him some respect? All, all I'm saying, <laughs> like, all on. I'm saying, like that, those are the type of games you play when you, you're, you're making money. They, you, buy, exactly. you buy you buy a random boat. Yeah, but see, it, oh, it, they're buying a boat and then they're doing nothing with it. Like Colin Joe, it's like your skin is so soft. Like stop it. No, but then think about this. Like let's make it as simple as possible. You make a million. You drop two hundred on a home. You paid like fifty, sixty in interest and any points or whatever you had to do to get the loan. Now all of a sudden you get taxed a little bit less. And now you own that. It's like, it's like a congratulations and, and then for in, doing being rich correctly. They're like, oh, hey, you, you, you completed the level. Now you don't got to pay taxes. Okay. Well, it's little boxes. It's like, how do you want to beat a video game without mm. beating the boards? It's like, no, like I'm beat, beat the, board, the board. Beat the board. <laughs> yeah. Learn how to beat the board and then just keep beating the board. Right, and then well, once you know how to beat the board, you're you, a DJ part of the time, so you you're in front of boards all the time, and you're constantly moving moving resources and micromanaging everything. That's yeah. your, your job is being a micromanager all the time. I so I encourage everyone let let's learn from people crushing it. Let's not, you know, I and of course and also learn from them in the other direction. Like don't become P Diddy and learn like, not yes, to be a P Diddy yeah. was a nickname of mine. And yes, I wear fur coats and yes, I wear the sunglasses <laughs> and like, but I'm also like I'm a chaotic bisexual, but I'm not doing what he's doing. He was stupid. What did I don't know how he That's, stopped? He was running yeah, the house parties. Yeah. How do you stop running the house parties and do some dark sided, actual evil shit? Like he's he's yeah, whatever, he's yeah. Illuminati going too, but way like, too. I'm some people him. have like, gone I'm, too I'm far. I'm the unpaid intern, so I'm calling out. All the ones that they, they make money, I don't care. I don't. You can never blood oath me either because I tried to kill myself. So haha, loophole. Anyway, we're seeing yeah, we're seeing a lot of like chapters close and then new chapters open. Oh my god, you know, Beyonce it, and uh, Jay Z are like not staying together or something, or they or they they, nah, they nah, step nah. down from their Illuminati positions. Wah, wah. She's doing country music now. Let her be. I I just think they're they'll be good. They'll be good. They, they are. No, they're They're, they're, they're feeding they're so that's many still, people. Ho- yeah, exactly. One, exactly. hope-wise. And and leave their children alone. If you ever talk about Blue Ivy, like, again, I have a gun. No, just kidding. I don't have a gun. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, for me, I, like, for me, I just see them as artists. I, I see the, the power moves and, like, 
the political things they but do, it looks but so it's like seamless when they do it because they're they get they're they're stylish and they're just they're them. Oh, They've yeah. been them for oh, the, she got together with him when she was like eighteen, he was older, yes, 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 blah they're, blah blah. But then she, she chose it and she stuck it and they're Bonnie and Clyde two thousand three. You guys influential forgot that song couple. already where everybody in Staten Island didn't. Yeah, they're the most like influential couple maybe of of our, our ge- of our generation. Of our Besides what? Like Outside. maybe like JFK and Marilyn Monroe? <laughs> like, you on. know. Yeah, in terms of pop culture. Yeah, right. And Con- what, like yeah. Kanye Kim right there too. Kanye Kim, yeah. yeah. And just like them moving the needle of culture. Right. And, okay. Um, that, I, that I can say. So. Even though Kanye's got uh, Bianca, since Bian- Bianca Sensori or whatever, the girl that she's wearing like the little. She's got yeah, the big yeah. Titties and she's what? What is. Now he knows how. Doing, whatever, he knows how to roll out the happen. album. However, he. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. He's, he's got smart. Back to back. He, he's fine. He was getting a blowjob in Italy or whatever. Like, leave <laughs> him alone. Leave him alone. Like, we have the same mental yeah, disease. Yeah. Leave him alone. It's it's interesting, but. Yeah, when he said the thing, I can't even say it. It's just the funniest clip I've ever seen of him was when he, obviously he's against his doctors and obviously a lot of doctors happen to be Jewish. So he started saying weird shit and then he did that one clip where he's like, I'm not going to say what kind of doctor it was. Okay, it was a Jewish doctor. He, he, like, he didn't even let the one sentence breathe. And my, he saw, I, was, I was just like, this is insane. This is fucking hilarious and miserable. He just can't release an album without making tons of noise right, anywhere else it just it just like, has to it's like the rollout no matter what his fashion is so ugly you guys wear yeezys on purpose like you've been duped <laughs> you've been so duped anybody anybody that wears anything that kanye west designs like you've been duped you look like a moron but respect to kanye west and his money oh yeah no he's he moves the needle he he's influenced so many and helped many and um, he came out with um, giving hope with music, and you know he has a church, doesn't he? He has like a, a school. Sorry, like, he has a, a little bit unconventional, and people yeah. judge it a little bit. But I do think that his, his the idea was meant to be good, and I think it is good. At least I hope. I, I just I just think some people when they're at that point where they have tens, millions, billions, it's just they're playing a different game. The resource they, they got to, the carte blanche. Would you guys aren't familiar with the term carte blanche? It means you got a blank check to unlimited resources like you can just do what you want like if i had carte blanche i would buy pete davidson's boat tomorrow and then like spray paint it pink and make it like (laughs) let Nicki minaj live on it for a little while so you guys leave her alone too because she's got to not do drugs i don't know what she's doing but she's so talented she's got to go back to that pink friday too is great pink friday too yes like i am i am what do you uh what have you been listening to but like i'm also like i'm also a barb this is so conflicting what if uh what hip hop albums have you been playing lately? Um, not hip hop albums. I've been playing some J Cole. The new a, album ha, might delete know, he later. Has a song called where the fuck is it? I don't know. It's called Seven Something. I can't even remember it. Seven all. Minute Trill. Yes. Yeah. I think that's that's so that's that's my favorite song. I've been enjoying. I've been enjoying what's been happening. I I know a lot of people are like, oh well, this is right, this is wrong. Like, this is right, this is wrong. These guys. Are, these guys are the guys, right? Yeah, like right, we're right, we're gonna right. look you still back. Still gotta deal with the same cast and characters. We're gonna look, look back in twenty. Like we're we're in their movie. We're we're watching their movie. God, uh, and whatever so Cole and Kenny want to do. Level hello. Whatever Give Kenny me and Cole. A check. <laughs> I I think they're making it entertaining. Whatever, whatever's happening. Um, I know Cole recently just said, "Hey, I I got a little out of line with the diss, but like, who did he diss?" The whole, well, see, I don't, I'm not up on no, this, but I do know that J. Cole they've graduated had, St. John's. Well, like Seven I Minute Trill, he, yeah. he's talking about Kendrick Lamar. Okay, see, I didn't even know that. And I was then just, Kendrick I was Lamar about my demons, made, like, a, yeah, made a song yeah. like a few weeks ago saying, F the big three, it's just a big me. Okay, so he's, so he's on his confidence. He's yeah. on his confidence stuff, and then it just kind of, him. it keeps us rolling, and it, it Tons of people are tuned in. Tons of people are excited I about music. I'm just happy people are excited about lyrics. I am tuned into Megan The Stallion. You are. I am. I am. Okay. I am Team Megan The Stallion. Just for any the music anything too. She, anything she does, everything okay. she does, and her whole arc with having to deal with the foot getting shot. And I don't care who wants to say who did it or who didn't do it. Yeah, she kept yeah. her mouth shut and tried okay. to do the. She tried to be seamless. You're with feeling the, the music. Pret- Yes, I loved her song "Hiss." Mm-hmm. That's I, that's my morning prayer. Okay, <laughs> she's she's wonderful. And then, yeah, and I guess, but then I also I'm not a Nikki hater because like Nikki, oh, no. Nikki changed so much in that 2009 to 2011 era when she's I was in college. Special. Like I have a poster 
of like of Nicki Minaj in my room that was made by one of my best friends in college. Like we made a custom Nicki Minaj. Like she was the spirit animal of my dorm. Like I, I would love to show Nicki Minaj the poster and explain Jeez. to her how she was the. She was oh, our Pink Guru Friday. in 2010. With the, with Pink the Friday is one of my favorite Gustav. albums. She what? Pink Friday is just one of my favorite albums. It just it just is. It's undeniable just such a and it will go down in history. As, sounds as an album amazing. Like that. But yeah, but Megan the Stallion, like, I, if she ever needs a bodyguard that's a white bitch, again, call me. <laughs> I don't even need to get paid. I don't. I don't. Just let me just admire you. <laughs> so you're listening to the, uh, the J. Cole, what, uh, uh, Megan the Stallion. What else? Cardi B. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Cardi girl. Cause, like, I, she, okay. I, she, I feel like me and her are, are she's, in the she's same great. mentality. She was, I was listening to Bodak Yellow walking past the church today. So it's like you can't you fuck go. with me if you wanted to. Like that's she's she now said that's it. that's a Bodak Yellow is one of the hardest song. songs ever written. Like in my opinion, like that's there's no touching that either. Like that one song is how much I like the Pink Friday album. So it's like ooh, I'm I'm like I said I'm conflicted. I am bipolar with the Cardi versus Megan. St- I'm not Megan. <laughs> Cardi versus Nikki thing. Yeah, no, and, I, know, I just Megan think just it's cool. On the side, like what the fuck? Let that bitch breathe. I I like the. Body. What I love though is just how it becomes that. Even though maybe it isn't even really that, but it's, I love I love just comp- thing, yeah. I just love competition. So I love competition, but I hate it when there's only like a limited amount of women in the industry versus how many men are in the rap game, and then it's like, oh, all right, you're sure. knocking the two biggest acts against each other, and every time a woman elevates in the rap industry, all of a sudden she's got to be somebody's enemy, right? Like that, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. Like there's like a there's lot yeah of yeah coming I, up. There's Glorilla. Like I'm I hope these girls don't ever get sucked into a one by one. Like even if the, even if your label it mm-hmm. wants to push it as a way for you to sell albums, like don't do it. Like in my opinion, like I would say don't do it. Like, if Glorilla, only if only, I, I, if I only these artists have those and choices. Lotto's a cutie. Like she needs a different name, I think though, because I, people make fun of that name, and I don't <laughs> think that's nice. I know it's supposed to be because yeah. Lotto and she's like mixed and everything, but like oh okay. Yeah, but I didn't like, know any I, of that. See, I, see, I, so, 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 see, here's the thing: like white people, like we don't automatically have that knowledge. I just have that knowledge because I'm black Irish. <laughs> but mm-hmm. yeah, so it's people I don't, are I didn't making really fun listen of the Lotto but, name because they don't understand it. And then she's like big lotto, and then people are assuming that she's like some big fat ugly bitch. Like it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And she's so cute and so talented. And she just did a song with J Lo. I think she's in the music video with J Lo, and they both look good. Like J Lo is a okay. perfection. I th- I think it's good that in this world, though, as an artist, public, I think it's just good that you people are doing stuff that gets people talking. Yeah, if you're just kind of, so. if you're just no drama, just chill. It. It's very hard to just get press. Like, oh, J. Cole. Yeah, like the ones J. That are Cole is their very rare. It's like J. Cole get, you know, driving around in a jumpsuit or whatever. Yeah, and, like, he, no, was, it, he was just a scholar. Like, he, he graduated St. John's University. Guy, That's the only cool. thing that we have going for us. If you graduated Staten Island, St. John's University, like, we don't we don't get jobs because of our degree, but we, we do have J. Cole. So there's that. <laughs> yeah, so when you're in that game you're you're a public artist you're signed you're on big, big labels i think it's good that there's just stuff's happening that gets people talking cuz then it's like well i got to hear the album i got to hear this right, so I, right, I like right. i like that that's happening with cole and um kendrick and i love that it's not violent thank you, god we we've had that's beef, annoying. we did that we've in had the 90s. beefs in the past we don't that, need that but it was violent. Let your, work, let your work speak for you instead of claiming whatever set or claiming yeah, that yeah. you have a gun. But that, even that says the girl that says she had a gun twice. But that's different. I need. To, I'm a woman. I need to protect myself. <laughs> yeah, I, I. I think the. I just think the attitude of competition is just is just healthy. As long as it's not violent. I used to be a cheerleader, so cheerleading. I, I went to it. nationals and everything, and like, and as someone that loves sports, like we need to take it back to that. Like, treat rap like a sport. And don't I treat agree. it like a fucking blood grudge. Like, you know yeah, what I mean? You're yeah. not joining a gang. You're signing with professional... You're signing up with white people in a fucking talent agency and a record label with mm-hmm. the A&R. Yeah. So, like, these people are not your friends. These people are your business representatives and your lawyers. Yeah, So, yeah. like, you need to... Don't act gang gang and for for a, someone named Beatrice. Like I don't I don't know if I'm making sense right now, but it's like mm-hmm. like don't, like if you especially like people that come into the industry and then they get an image crafted for them. I'll tell you guys this: in 2016, I was talking to A and R reps and they actually were scouting me to become a female 
Eminem type. Like they wanted me to become like Eminem's like spiritual stepdaughter or something when I was in Vegas and I was meeting these people and then I was supposed to ship over to LA and they wanted me to rock like black, no, I'm sorry, they wanted me to wear like blue violet colored box braids and mm. have this whole look. I can't even remember what the name, what name they wanted me to have. Okay. Um, but it, I never, you know, these things never went through. Yeah, I never yeah. signed anything. Okay. And I'm glad I didn't because I, you know, the sacrifices they want you to make if you, anyway, things that I was already aware of. I had a lot of weird things happened in Las Vegas. I stole a, a I stole an Illuminati fucking uh, Bible book thing, handbook. Ha ha, I have it. Um, yeah. Yeah, so no. I, just, I never became, I never became crazy. Industry, Eminem's stepdaughter, but I could have. <laughs> just it, don't no, don't it, become something you're not. <laughs> it's, it's so real. So what, what a journey, right? Like, and that was because yeah, I was leaving comedy. And ups I was, and uh, downs. A fugitive, and I was uh, in Vegas, living. I was living amongst pimps and prostitutes and heroin dealers and everybody. And it was at the Emerald Suites. Wow. And I was just Irish Miss Hibernia. I was like a pageant girl, <laughs> fucking uh, ancient order of Hibernians. Look them up, JFK. Where I'm here to solve his assassination too. By the way, I don't know if it was the Italians or anyway. Nah, there's, <laughs> there's so much going on, right? And, yes. And you you've been through the storm. And oh, here you are, still still ready to go, still making things. You can't kill me because I couldn't even kill myself, dude. Like, it's, <laughs> so what are you going to take from me? Nothing. I have no, you, There's nothing you can take from me. If I tell you that Dave Noodles is going to be president in like 2035, like, you're going to deal with it because I'm, I'm now the PR agent. So you want to deal with me? You want to mess with me? Imagine being somebody that you, has me as an ex. Like, I'm so sorry. That sucks for you. Where, so, of course, it's... I'm all about just, you know, getting it done and making it happen and, and going for it, right? And, and and being a little quiet about it along the way. Yes, so but, you're, that's, but, where, that's where you're the opposite of me, too, and I respect that so much because that's not my nature. I but, can never yeah. do what you do. I, I can never do the patience. I can never do the... <laughs> you have the patience of Job, like they say. So what... What are you, what are you working on right now? Because I know there's a few things that are, are coming out or that... Um, what can we look forward to? Yeah, from so you? I have a podcast that's starting that's called the Fear No Man podcast because I'm going to be, like I said, I'm going to be using my, my little Illuminati intern uh, intel and information that I've been born into. I've been observing this shit for years since I was a child. Anybody that's my friend knows I'm a psychopath uh, when it comes to celebrity pop culture shit and why because I was building up to this moment. I'm 33 now, so I'm a level 33 Mason. New pod. Um, yeah. I'm excited. New pod. Uh, it's going to be done at Hub 17. Through nice. Kenny over there. If anybody that works in this North, that's only something if you're local, if you know the North Shore, you, you're familiar with Kenneth Graham. He's, of a, he's a great photographer and a great studio organizer over there. So I'm going to be dealing Kenny's with him. Kenny's the man. Actually, I got got, yeah, I got a contact with him. But he does great headshots too. If you're if you're a comedian that needs headshots, you can do them oh, for you for very is, reasonable. He's special. Reasonable. Yes, he's very special. Very blessed. Very benevolent. So you got um, the pod. I'm excited about that. Yeah, that's coming in 2024. Uh, yeah, it's going to probably start up by, uh, what's, what's today? Today's April? Definitely by early June. Nice. Yes, because I need, I need one more month to, to get up on that. And then, um, I'm, I produce, I'm a co-producer for the Fifth Borough Comedy Festival. I got this little... Oh, sick. I got this little lanyard When's right that here. coming? That's always in September okay. of this year. So we haven't put out the dates yet. As far as I know, I got to talk to my two co-producers. Well, I got, there's a few of us, but, uh, you know, we take turns on who's wearing the chef hat and who's doing all the bills and everything so that'll be probably mid to late september we're gonna have submissions open very soon it usually costs like 10 to 15 dollars to submit and guess what if you're like blah, 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 and i'm gonna pay submission fee pay the submission fee it goes to paying the comics and it pays for all the fucking merchandise and it pays for us renting the hall yeah. we don't make money off the shit yeah, we walk we, away I feel with eighty dollars like if people, we're lucky. People really have to question that. Yeah. yeah. So and again, it's like it's it's a, it's a fun festival and it's a worth worthwhile festival. If it wasn't, I wouldn't be the producer of it. So you know I'm what excited I mean. For so that you want to be a part of Staten Island comedy where we're taking over the city? Then come join us. If not, you can keep sucking dick to try to get stage time at a bringer club. I don't know. Now yeah. that's it's an amazing uh, series of events. I've been to a bunch. I try to go every year. It's always fun. Yeah. So, while so that's I was amazing. In my, I was in my three-year depression, so I, I laid back and I didn't take part in it for three years. But this year, I'm fully back. So we're, we're excited oh, for nice. that. Yeah. I, like I said, it was John Kirshner took up most of the brunt of everything, and so did Nick Cara while I was oh, really not great. doing well. And Darren Joseph and Antonio, Greg and Rob, Patrick Haggerty. Like they, they really they did a lot. They, they, they 
they took over for like for when like for the hole that existed when I was gone for those three years. And oh, I appreciate them. They're good stuff. They're all. If you ever talk to them, if you ever deal with them in comedy, they're good guys. It doesn't matter if we sound like stupid guidos or anything. Like they're good men, and they they can be trusted, and they can be they're good to do business with. So. Oh, I, that's I co-sign all that's that. exciting. Yeah, so you got yeah. a lot of great stuff happening. Yeah, and then what else? I'm also working on, like you said, you're going to see me bitching about my friend's murder or my friend's suicide, quote unquote, because that shit, it links up to what's going on in the news right now with all the sex trafficking rings that are falling. Okay. You, you might think you know what this girl went through, but you didn't. So know that. And okay. uh, stay safe. <laughs> so yeah, no, you got a lot going on. I'm really excited to see... All these new things unravel the pod. The, oh, and music the, too. I'm sorry, I, I sing. So oh, now, really? Yeah, there's other oh, stuff that's coming through, and okay. I gotta reproduce the stuff with Jax's vocals, so she'd be on a song with me, even though she's not here. Blah blah blah. Yeah. Oh, so nice. Yeah, yeah. Can't yeah. wait for all that. That's gonna yeah, be amazing. It's gonna be fun because I've always been an emo girl, so it's gonna be like a little bit kind of like emo y R and B ish, whatever. Very, a lot of fun. I don't know what I, I don't know if I'm gonna go by my own name or not. We'll yeah. Talk, we'll figure it out. I have the whiskey burrito is always my social media so i might might keep it there we'll see all right no so i'm excited you got so many great things your story you know i'm, I'm so happy you're still here <laughs> I, right I've been, what, I've been hearing that a lot lately. what a feels, journey really what a journey nice it's been hear. for you because i really it was i was very close to not being like i said i had purchased the poison at one point i had access to guns i always could have jumped in front of a train i tried to hang myself a year ago and when i was in the hospital i was in a psych ward and they take away strings and they try to do anything to make you not hang yourself. But they wouldn't let me have headphones. And that was like the one thing that was keeping me, uh, mm. you know, whatever. So I took off my leggings and I used those as a noose. It can be, it can be done. Wow. And they didn't even find me. They didn't even find me. Hours later, I woke up because the thing broke and I fell down and whatever. Wow. And I survived that. But I survived it with like... It took like a couple of weeks for me to get back to normal because I had suffocated. You know, you can't choke yourself like that. Mm. You, can, you can give yourself a seizure aka what might have happened to my girl Jax if you're choked out enough you can have aftershock where you get seizures and you you die from that wow. because the muscles and the, and the compression of the chemicals that's how people die no so I'm Jack's so happy you didn't do any of that shit yeah yes and you're here yes. with us you're, you're about to drop music pod bunch yes. of events connecting yeah, dots movie stuff. I got I got a lot of, a lot of little things going on a lot of like a live reality TV show the dating thing where I'm going to run a reality dating show out of a strip club, but nobody's going to be naked. Okay. There's going to be, you know, at least PG-13 dressed. And basically we'd be choosing like a live man and a woman. Okay. The woman could be a dancer too. Because if you guys know these strippers, they got full lives. They date people. Okay. Like don't, they say don't date strippers. I say do it. (laughs) (laughs) All right. They're wonderful people. No, there's a lot. So there's so much to look forward to. You can get her out of the life. No, I'm kidding. And you've just... You know, you continue to weather the storm. You continue to, you know, face I love storms. your fears. It's the Irish in me. Yeah. And you just keep grinding and shining. Yeah. So, you know, so where could people connect to connect find, with fo- sure. yeah, if Follow the journey, follow your pages, the comedy, the shows. So the I have, um, I have Instagram and I have Snapchat. And those are at Whiskey Burrito, which is W-H-I-S-K-E-Y-B-U-R-R-I-T-O. So it's one word, Whiskey Burrito. I made it when I was in college and I was drunk and high and I was like, I love whiskey and I love burritos. I can become this. And that was that was my thing. Um, Twitter is also Whiskey Burrito or X, whatever you want to call it. But I stopped using yeah. that because it's really just... I, I don't know if Elon Musk bought it on purpose to punk us, but like it, the, the it sucks now. It's not. Yeah, fun. yeah, okay. So I, you can follow me there. Maybe I'll get back on there or whatever. <laughs> I actually, I changed my name on there to Kane Martin, and I started using a male avatar that on looks Twitter. Like it, it's Tom Hardy's like, on, on Twitter on X. On, on it's Tom Hardy's like face down to here or something. And it's it's him as like Ames from Inception. Oh wow! If you guys are familiar with Inception? Um, I use his picture. As, and, and so people respect me more online. They actually, I, I talk politics and like policy and protocol with people and I okay. go at it. But when I was a woman, I was just called a whore. <laughs> if they didn't agree oh, with my wow. politics, they're like, hey, you're a slut. And so I'm like, okay, I got to mm. do something about this. So I became a man online and it's, it's been a lot better. I'm, man, I'm a man on Reddit. Too, Is that so also like, Whiskey Burrito? 
Yes. Got it. Yeah. Okay. So people, there's, and so for some reason, no one's made the connection or called me out on it. Like, they're like, wait a second. Like, there's just one whiskey burrito, and then there's a whiskey burrito that looks like <laughs> Tom Hardy. That's fine. All right. Um, so that's that's Twitter. So yeah, I'm you actually that's just I've whiskey got, burrito. I got a lot to say, board. so I'm actually gonna go back to Twitter soon. And then I got TikTok, but I'm I'm of the I'm of the millennial age. Like, we kind of missed. Like, that's a very Gen Z app. TikTok. Uh-huh. And I know a lot of people have adapted it, and moms have adapted it, but I never fully got to figure it out. So okay. I'm still on there, and I, on there, I, whisk, somebody took whiskey burrito on on TikTok. So I'm not even whiskey burrito on TikTok. On TikTok, I'm yellow brick broad, like yellow brick road, but it's Y E L L O W B R I K B R O A D. Yeah, yellow brick broad. Interesting. <laughs> yeah, so t- TikTok I got to start using because especially with the music stuff, that's how things take off with music now. It's like you got to go viral on TikTok, and then your song gets radio play. I don't know. <laughs> Um, what else? There's other social media. I think that's 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 all the so- oh, and then That's so interesting because yeah. if you put a B in front of road, it becomes broad. That's that's me. That's yeah, because so my middle name is Dorothy, so it's like the Wizard of Oz. Like I'm just a yellow brick broad, <laughs> just going down the yellow brick road trying to find Oz. I get sh- sh- struck by lions and robots and shit, and then flying monkeys. I don't know what's happening. I'm in Oz. When I'm in I'm in hell. I'm in Oz. Like, <laughs> it's a lot. That's so real. So, so any you. Maybe you could share some, just something with us, you know, someone going through some times, they're, they're feeling, um, it. They're, they're going through the, sh- the worst right now, but the most but interesting, what, what, what advice could you give someone going through something that okay, maybe could help Okay, if you're somebody them? like me, who, if you're a sick bastard, right, and you've been one since you were a child, like if you're rebellious, if you're a little bit of a maniac, the most interesting thing you'll ever do is face the devil head on in his face and show him that you're not leaving because if you're living in hell he's got to live there with you so be the one to show him who's boss because he's the one that fell from heaven to begin with so he's flawed not you thank you so <laughs> much pauline thank you so much thank you for having me this on has been so type much 88 fun. and yeah make sure to be on the lookout for the fit Pearl comedy fest yes yeah, submit let's see if i think you're funny or not <laughs> fit Pearl comedy fest dot com um, no, just Fipper, at this point, just, uh, Fipper, comedy fest Fipper on comedy, Instagram. The, there's the, ins- there's the Instagram. I'd have and the to link get it is from in Nick the, Cara. probably links in the bio, right? Yeah. Nick, yeah, Nick Cara and John Kirshner would have the social media yeah. for them because they've been running it for the last three years, but you can always come to me personally if you want to submit and I'll pass your tape along. And there I'll, we go. And we'll figure out the, the $15 thing. You can't, whatever. That doesn't matter. We know, we know this. Fipper comedy fest. That's, um, yeah, like, and like, then the also, music. Like, people with websites, who knows? People. So the, go. It's always fifth with the number, so it's five. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Fit Pearl um, Comedy Festival. Oh, yes, here we go. We yeah, go. yeah. The top, lo- the top one. And if right you there. click the Insta, then you could go to the website. Oh, right there. Fit yeah, so Comedy dot com. There we go. Awesome. And then yeah. Yeah, or Fifth Pearl Comedy Festival is the Instagram or whatever. Nice. I, I'll be getting involved with that more because I'm pretty sure that's Nick Cara who's been doing a lot of that. He's really great. Nice. Yeah. No, it's gonna be. An, um, I'm excited for the year. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank Shank, you. Thank you because I know, you know, when people go through stuff, it's tough. It's, it, it's, it, I can't, you know, we're all going through something, but for you to be here and some of us, everything and you know to, and I mean, to, to be so something. transparent with, with the shit you've been through mm-hmm. and then to just, it makes anyone going through it be like, damn. Also, if you work I, in the healthcare industry, me. if you no, work in the psychiatric industry, be better to your psych patients. Like, seriously. Like, they're mentally ill. Like, be nice and don't touch the women. <laughs> Real stuff. Thank you again. Uh, we're going to play a couple of, a song or two before we go. Make sure, Maker Park Radio, so, so many amazing things. They have Sonic Sonic Lab workshops yeah, where you can learn got seminars coming up. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go to one of them, even though I know this shit, but I want to see them teach it. Yeah, MakerParkRadio.nyc. That there's workshops April 28th, May 19th, May 31st. Learn about speaking for radio, interview booking, yeah, and like planning. I definitely, I definitely want to try. Uh, there's so many amazing stuff happening. And um, shout out to Maker Park Radio. I'm I'm grateful to be here once a month. Um, make sure to check out Type 88 Radio. Dot com. Type 88. We're, we're playing music all day, every day. 88 no commercials. is double infinity. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, so well, let's drop a track and um, have a great night, everybody. All right, guys. I'll connect with you. Bye. <laughs>